this is the provoked prawn asking whether your CPU is thermal throttling, and have you even checked to find out whether it is? Your system may well be thermal throttling, causing your CPU to get too hot, and therefore your overall system performance not be as good as you might hope. Now, I recently built in the Leon Lee Dynamic Evo XL, and I have upgraded the internals with the Core i9 14900K CPU. Naturally, a high-end processor, which could potentially run quite hot. And during my testing, which included some AI overclocking, I wanted to find out how things were running. And I initially hit a problem where I noticed that there was some thermal throttling happening. Now, testing with Cinebench, I found that several of the performance cores were hitting up to 100 degrees C, or in the high 90s, which indicates thermal throttling. If you don't know already, there's an easy way to check for thermal throttling in your system. Download Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, which is used for overclocking, but also has various different benchmark and stress test tools in it, to make your performance checks really simple. So for example, you can see that you can benchmark your system and then it'll let you know immediately if it's thermal throttling and it'll give you active warnings about it. And you can also use the stress test system in this tool to do the similar thing. That'll put it through several high load tests and this will then quickly indicate whether there's a problem. You might well think your system's working perfectly fine and then run a test like this and see that your CPU is throttling multiple times during the stress test. This obviously indicates a problem that you need to fix and sort out, and that could then help the overall system performance. And luckily it's fairly easy to do, or it could theoretically be with a few tips that I'm going to help you with now. There are different formats, obviously, of your case and of your PC, and there are loads of different setups that you can do. I've done several, for example, in the Leon Lee Dynamic Evo XL, but fan config and radiator placement can play a big part in this. You can see here I've got a push-pull system set up in here with a top-mounted all-in-one cooler, for example, and I've also done side-mounted, as you saw earlier on in the video. I've done a video separately on the best placement of the all-in-one radiator and the things to think about, but what I wanted to highlight here is the impact that the fan configuration can have on your system. You can see, for example, I'm using reverse fans here to basically have six intake fans in this case and then a bunch of exhaust ones. Now with the recent build, I use Lian Lee's Infinity fans on the radiator, but I realized that perhaps this wasn't the best logic of the standard fans that come with all-in-one Galahad 2 cooler actually are set up for reverse mode, which meant that I had 340 mil fans on the bottom of the case for intake, and then three exhaust fans on the all-in-one radiator sending air through that and out of the case. I thought once I noticed that my system was CPU thermal throttling that maybe swapping them out for the reverse fans would improve the logic. Now you could alternatively use standard fans and flip them over as you can see me doing here with the Kraken Z73 and there I'm using the SL120 V2 fans, but you can see you can see the back of those fans on the side-mounted radiator because I've set that to intake air in. So I'm using the same logic here. Basically what I'm saying is sometimes it may well be worth intaking air through your radiator instead of exhausting through it. And this could then keep the CPU running cooler. Now in this system, I actually ended up with a push-pull setup and I had initially set it up so that it would pull cold air through the radiator from inside the case and exhaust it out of the rear. But now, during this testing, I swapped all these fans around, so I then have six reverse blade fans intaking air instead. Now, I'd also recommend considering your thermal paste application, or even the thermal paste that's already on the system. There may well be pre-applied thermal paste on your cooler, and it might have been there for a while, or it might not be that good quality. You can get Noctua cleaning wipes to clean up your CPU and the copper plate on your all-in-one cooler, and then you can apply better quality thermal paste and make sure there's a good application there. Now this can well worth be doing anyway on your system over time, as the thermal paste will degrade in quality over time. You replace it with something like Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut paste, and that can really help improve performance and give a good application of that to ensure good coverage of the IHS on the CPU, and then that should ensure good contact between that and the all-in-one pump block to then ensure that you're getting good cooling. 
Now, obviously, the combination of these things, thinking about the air management in your case, the logic of where the fans are set to intake and exhaust, and how many you've got in the system can make a difference as well as that thermal-based application. So now I've got 340 mil fans on the bottom, six 120 mil fans on the radiator intake in air, and four exhaust fans in the case. And now when I run the stress test on the i9 14900K, I'm no longer thermal throttling. And despite being under heavy load, the CPU is actually running at more reasonable temperatures. Now, obviously, these stress tests are going to put your CPU under much heavier load than you'd normally do with gaming or everyday activities. So it still will appear pretty hot in the 90 degree mark some instances, but that's not necessarily something to worry about because you can see we're not thermal throttling, it's not causing a slowdown in the performance of the CPU. And overall, this is good. Now, note that this is also overclocked with AI overclocking, which I've done a video on separately, but this is what the performance looks like there. And you can see just the overall temps and speeds and things there. And so the result's pretty good. So just a few tweaks can make a big difference. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to find out more related content. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.